how did my AnyType go from looking like this to looking like this? And how can you do the same thing? In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use CSS files to make your AnyType pop. I'm going to be showing you how I did this on my MacBook Air. So if you're on a Windows computer, it's probably going to look a little different from the file side, and I apologize. I am not a Windows user. All I'm using for this video is AnyType, the default file explorer on Mac, which is Finder, and Visual Studio Code. I'm going to have some links in the description to where I learned how to do this, so if you have any more questions or want to try to experiment with any of this on your own, there's going to be resources available for you there. Lastly, if you design anything you think is really cool, please let me know. I'd love to see what people come up with because there's really not a lot of innovation right now in the AnyType theme world. With all that out of the way, let's get into how you can make your AnyType stand out. First things first, let's figure out where this file is supposed to go. In AnyType, you can click on File, Show Directory, and then Work. And this will show you where your AnyType folder is. If you wanted to get to it naturally, it's in the macOS library, Application Support, and AnyType. Not sure where it is on Windows, but I'm sure somebody smarter than me can figure that one out. This is where we're going to want to put our custom CSS file. Obviously, it's not quite there yet, so let's fix that. I'm using Visual Studio Code. You could probably use something else, but VS Code is what I'm familiar with. Inside of VS Code, we can just hit New File, and then Command S will automatically save this. Now, I'll just call this custom because that's what any type is looking for. And it's automatically looking to save it in any type because I was testing this beforehand. But even if it's not, in these recent places, any type should show up there. If not, you can always see if you can copy the view from that finder window over to VS Code, or you can just try to navigate to it through the library. Regardless, we're here now. We've got custom. We're going to click on all files and change that to CSS and then hit save. Now we're editing custom.css. Any changes we make in here are going to happen as well over on any type, or at least once we refresh it. So let's get about to making those changes, shall we? But first things first, let's try to change the font. Back in VS Code, we're going to start with body, and then a pair of curly braces, and then font family. We're going to put this in quotation marks, and there. Now you can decide what kind of font you want to use. Because I'm pretty basic, I'm just going to use Times New Roman. It's very simple. Your machine probably has it downloaded already, and it's going to be very obvious when we compare it to this very futuristic or minimalistic, I suppose, style of font we have right now. So let's go over here, let's save this, and then we will Command R to refresh any type. You can already see those numbers. There we go. Almost everything is in Times New Roman. Now, this is where it's going to get a little trickier and where you're going to have to do some experimentation because it would be impossible for you to list everything you can change with custom CSS. Obviously, we changed the font, but something's not changing here. It's this guy. Here's the culprit. These two things right here, these buttons, they're not changing to Times New Romans. Even their options, even the rest of these months are times, but these aren't. How do we fix this? Well, you could either be a super big brain CSS and any type nerd and know exactly what these are called, or you can be like me, just go up to debug and then click dev tools. Now we're going to get all this fancy coding stuff on the side. We're going to click on this little button right here. And this basically, when it turns blue, allows us to click on anything and have it come up in those dev tools. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to go down here and keep scrolling. And here is where the text is stored in this dot select font family enter. That's the native any type font. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in here, go down a little bit, paste it there, and then just change this to Times New Roman. Save that, refresh this, boom, there we go, it's changed. Now all of the fonts are the same. Obviously, if we change this to be a different font, it wouldn't sync the rest of the fonts. So if we made this you know, Arial or something, it wouldn't necessarily make the rest of the fonts Arial. These are stored in two different locations. Now there might be a more efficient way to do this. I'm just showing you the basic way that I learned from the thread, which is on any type. I'll link it down below in the description. All right, let's get to something a little more complicated. In these dev tools, if we close these out and then reopen them, it's just going to start us in a very basic area. In this body section, you can see where the regular font family is. It's Times New Romans because we set it up. But we can also scroll down here to get to root. Root is really interesting because root allows us to change the colors of almost anything we want. So uh, let's copy all of this, put this into here. And then we can go back to any type and start playing around with this. So for example, if we want to change uh, 
this sidebar here, what I like to do, because I don't really know what everything is tertiary, secondary, is just start clicking and unclicking these to see what changes. And obviously that sidebar is changing. Color shape tertiary is the sidebar of any type. And it's this kind of lesser gray. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want that to be a different color. So I could go back here to tertiary, click on the little color selector. And this is why VS Code is nice because it has, among many other things, a color selector available. And you can just choose whatever you want. For the sake of example, let's make it red just because that's very obvious that I changed it. We'll click Save on this, and then we'll reload. Boom, there it is. Very bold choice, very stark choice, but it's an option. And if you wanted to use this to you know, create your own dark mode or whatever, you could very easily do that. You could go and design all these custom different colors and use that to make kind of your own style for any type. Now, again, I could keep going more in depth on all of the different options, you know, all of the different things you could grab and change. But instead, what I'm going to do is probably at this point, start showing you some different examples of what different any type users have created on their own and talk a little bit about what this would mean. As you know, any type included the option for custom CSS a while back, and people are still playing around with it. People like me are making tutorials on it. What I really think any type needs to do is design a theme library, something similar to Obsidian, if any of you have used that. They need a way for people to install these things without having to go through this entire coding backend process. It's pretty straightforward stuff as far as computer science goes, but it's still over the head of most of the average users, I would assume. It took me a couple of months to really sit down and focus before I could understand how to work this in such a way that I could communicate it to any third party, to you guys, the viewers. So I really think that while this is a step in the right direction, any type should make similar to how they've made their any type gallery and any type theme gallery where you could install and test out different themes. But in any case, that's how you can go about changing the CSS for any type. There's probably more tutorials out there on how to get more in depth in CSS. This is more intended as an explanation of how to use CSS through any type, not how to learn CSS on its own. Let me know if you've designed anything cool or made a different color scheme that you really like. And until then, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.